that just before we kick off, I'm going to remind uh, our viewers uh, a couple of rules of this Coffee with Column. And by the way, you're very welcome to Coffee with Column Live. It's a great pleasure to have you all here today. And um, some of the rules, we've, um, we have this uh, deaf community clap because all the microphones, apart from me and my guest, are, are, uh, are muted. So if anybody wants to uh, tell her she's doing a great job at any aspect of whatever she talks about, well then give her a clap like that. And then we're going to go through a conversation, you and I, Orla, looking forward to that, looking forward to learning a bit more about you, a bit more about your business. And that'll take us about 20 minutes or there or thereabouts, and then we do Q&A. And in the Q&A section, uh, towards the end, if anybody wants to ask a question, they might stick up their hand, tell me that they're ready to ask a question, and I'll simply unmute their microphone for the question, so they'll ask the question directly of you. So fair enough. It's okay? Yeah, all good, all good. Great stuff, great stuff. So, the lovely Orla Foley, uh, you're very welcome uh, to Coffee with Column Live. Please tell us, who is Orla Foley? Thanks for having me, Colm. I am a physiotherapist with a holistic twist. I was reared in Kilaloo since I was four years of age, so I'm living and working in my hometown, which is a privilege, because it's a beautiful town. And I have over 24 years of experience, and I'm 19 years in self practice. And when I say a holistic twist, it means I look at everything from mind, body, spirit. I look at the physical manifestations, and I look at lifestyle and well-being advice and rehabilitation exercises. One of my many qualifications is a master's in sports science. And the modalities that I favor to use a lot in work are amazing gentle therapies like phenotype therapy, bone technique, and uh, EMDR, and I'm also a yoga teacher. Wow, that's a huge amount of stuff. Uh, it tired already listening to all the qualifications you have. Um, but listen, how did you get into that originally? Go way back. How, how did all that come about, your interest in? Well, heal or heal thyself, really. I come from a family of uh, sports people. We're the Foley's in Killaloo, so all our life we played sports. And all our lives, with our, we had injuries on and off. And, you know, giving each other massages, working out and lots, because there wasn't a third available back in the day. And then that led me to pursuing a career and going down the path of studying it. My first clinical experience was with Mary Cole, so she was in um, John Square, she was the Shannon Team Physio, and it was a great, great time. Up to six to seven people at a time, and it's interesting. Now in clinic, that I have no blankets and no soft furnishings. It's like back in those days where it's just a pin that you can spray and wipe down easily. And then what led me to is further into homelessness was the need for it. Like my mom knew the inside of every therapist's room from a consultant because she had had a car crash years and years ago and she had suffered chronic pain with it. And they kept telling her it was all in her head. And clean of sacral actually pro proved them right. It was blockages and uh, flow of fluid in her head that was causing the pain. And um, clean of sacral greatly helped me with that. And I also, when I worked over in an orphanage in Romania, the effect of other therapists for their qualified in clean of sacral therapy. And when you worked on the kids in the orphanage, you could see the immediate calm and bits and happiness especially the kids with special needs. So it was, yeah, it was a real lucky coincidence as really that helped me on that path in this study. Well, I, I loved your phrase there, Orla, healer, heal thyself. That's a really lovely phrase. And uh, I'm not so sure about the happy accidents. I think more divine inspiration and divinely led would be where I would uh, suggest this is all coming from because clearly I've known you for some time now and clearly you live and, uh, and work in your passion which is just so refreshing. It's just, it's just lovely to see. So Kinkora Therapy, let's talk about your business that you set up in 2001 in Killaloo and was running a uh, few ups and downs. You might touch on those, but running in the main very well until last week when the world changed. And then we'll talk afterwards about how the world has changed. So please, Orla. Yeah, it's been a privilege to work in the town for the last 19 years. And it's, it has, as um, you mentioned, a few ups and downs. When I started out, I was working six, seven days a week and doing teams, and it was very intense. But it also meant, because you're, I was working with teams, I could have four months off at a time. 
and walk traveling and learn about all these amazing different other techniques that were available in the world. And then when the recession hit, I, um, it got very quieter. So I went back and did my master's, which is one of my addictions, as you can guess. I love learning. So I went back and did my master's in UL, which was amazing, rejuvenated my learning and my confidence in my skills as a practitioner and feeling to help people even more. And then last year, I suffered a downward spiral um, after uh, an upsetting event in my life. And I was privileged enough to be able to take a module in positive psychology in UL with my former professor. And that was amazing because everything I had learned holistically, well-being point, now being proven by science positive psychology. And that is really helping me now in the current crisis because, you know, we're always going to have crisis in our lives. There's going to be challenges. And that's one of the big lessons of when my brother died in 2016, what I learned, the real suffering in life is expected to have to be fair. Life isn't fair. We're all dealt with challenges, just how best we choose to deal with them. And we have a choice, as a dear friend of mine, Declan Coyle says, we have a green platform and it's like you can either go green and take the positive and see what can you do, what can you positive action can you take in the here and now, what can you move towards where you want to be, or you can go red, which is, oh no, panic, what am I doing, poor me, why does this happen? And we all have that choice, the amber moment in the middle where you make that choice and you fall. So thankfully, 75% of the time, I'm going green. And yes, I'm like everyone. I feel the fear, it's palpable in the air, it's uncertain times. I am um, doing my best, look after my own needs, look after yeah. my own hygiene, eating well, exercising, sleeping, good hygiene, limiting how much media I'm watching a day. Okay. Everything is all, almost like last year's negative experience for me had to prep me for now. Wow. Uh, Orla, when I met you first, uh, some time back, uh, you mentioned in passing that your brother had passed, and I obviously sympathised with you. I'm sure the listeners here and the viewers will, are doing the same. But I was taken aback when I realised uh, that we all knew your brother. Want to talk about that, Anthony? Um, well, he's my brother, and it's very proud of him. You know, and it was very proud of the community we live in because, as everyone saw at that time. If I may, or it's possible that some people don't know that we're talking about Anthony Foley. So, oh yeah, Anthony Foley, the the man, the brother, the father, the husband, the legend. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, he, he's an amazing man, and when he went through his own challenge with his job, I always believed and kept the faith, and I really did believe everything would come right for his team. He had all the the, the right attitude in there, a great team spirit. And I think that's why I believe everything will come right for us as a nation, because we have the good attitude, we've got great team spirit, we're all in this together. Um, yeah, so well, yeah, we're going to the end, so we'll all keep going to the end. Of course, of course. Well, listen, Nora, thanks for touching on that. I know it's a difficult subject, but uh, you, you know, you, we spoke earlier before the show started, <clears throat> and we spoke about the fact that that was one of your challenges that knocked you off the rails as. Of course it would, uh, but you had to, you know, hang on in there. You had to recover from it, and it's part of your journey through your business uh, to date. Um, I'm really interested in, if I may, touch on the fact that you are a therapist, uh, many different modalities, but you're effectively a therapist, as I understand it. And by the way, if I use any of the wrong language here, it's it's uh, unintentional, right? But you're a therapist, and the question really is, I'm sure some people who are watching or listening are going to ask, well, how do you become a therapist and turn that into an actual business? Because I think some therapists struggle with that. They're brilliant at what they do, they love what they do, passionate about what they do, but turn that into a way of uh, earning a crust can be difficult. Do you want to touch on that for a sec? How did you manage to do that? Again, it just flowed. I flowed into it. The reason I came back to Killaloo to set up was I'd have had to work 40 hard hours a week in Limerick before we were covering costs. So I figured if I can move home here, I'd have lower costs and it was easier to set up. So that was one of the blessings of my decisions because that takes a lot of pressure off financially. 
doing the best you can is all you can do. Upskilling, learning. You don't know all the answers. Always have a good circle, network of people around you you can ask and refer people to. Believe in yourself because it's very hard as a parent because you were you're trained as a parent. You're not trained for the world. <laughs> you know, you're not trained for business. I'm lucky I come from my family business background. We always had a business. I've worked since I was very young, so I'm not afraid of hard work. Um, and just keep learning, keep upskilling, and keep doing the best. People appreciate when you do 100% for them. You know, they know that. If you're passionate about what you're doing, you're doing what you're meant to do. You just keep doing it. Yeah, I think a phrase you used during the week when we were chatting was uh, operate from a, pos- a place of love. You know, you, you love your clients. You love helping people. And as a result, your business uh, has flourished up until now. Uh, really interesting business tip there, if I may, for everybody, uh, Orla touched on. Uh, choosing her location because of the lower costs associated with it. That's a really good business strategy um, because at the end of the day, you know, you've got to make your rent, if you like, first before you start paying yourself or anybody else. So uh, always be aware of that and don't be afraid to make good business decisions like that. Um, Orla, what now? We're, we're, so everything was going swimmingly despite the ups and downs of life up until last week and then the world changed for all of us and it's changed for you, it's changed for King Cora Therapy. So uh, what's it like just at the moment? And then we get into why you're going to be positive for the future. Well, first, let me say I don't have children and I don't have a partner to have to be concerned about. So I have two dogs and two cats that I have to feed in water. So the pressure isn't as great as it would be for people that are in that situation, which I understand and I have great empathy. I have great empathy for my friends on the front line, which are many in the medical service. And as a result of that, when the HFP called out for healthcare workers, I was signed up with 24,000 people. So if I need it, I'll, I'll do what is needed. Um, in the meantime, I'm just, I'm going to do my accounts, get ahead, do all my jobs, my to-do list, sort out filing, clear out email that's been cluttering up on my my hard drives and just do all the to-do and I'm upskilling on marketing because before now my business has been really word of mouth you know and it's a pity like so I've already been texting people that have been done recently to me just to get testimonials because I'm not great at doing that yet and like one guy that had come down to me a few weeks ago, he was looking at surgery in Dublin and he then had one treatment and I've checked in with him every week and he's flying it, he's back walking, he's no pain, he's like a new man, so I'm going to get his testimonial. And people don't know that's available. Um, and that's anecdotal, you know, that's his experience, but I've loads of people that have had that experience, so I need to get their testimonials. And also, I'm great with babies if they're not sleeping or if they've got colic or if they've got pain. So I'm, you know, contacting those mothers who'll have a bit more time to get testimonials. So, and I'm going, and I'm engaging with someone to help me a little bit with marketing. So I'm learning a whole new world, and I've even learned about Zoom now thanks to you, Colin. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> to the world of Zoom, or there'll be no stopping you now. I know, and lots of my colleagues are doing this for consultations. Yeah. You know, triaging people and helping them and giving them advice this way. Um, so I would try and see what I love being able to touch people hands on and see. Um, but I'll see. I can maybe offer it to be of some assistance to people. Sure. Um, like a few of the modalities I use, like EMDR and Reiki, can actually be done at a distance, which is quite interesting. One of my friends, that's a medic, has been tested positive and. I, I was, and she's a real scientist, so I've offered it out there so that you have an experience as a scientist to see what she notices with a distance treatment. So hopefully she'll take it, me up on that because it's a time for us all to learn. Fantastic, fantastic. There are a couple of things you, you touched on there, and I loved it. Uh, you, you were very honest about your own personal situation where you don't have family, per se, to, or, you know, dependents, if you like, to, to depend on you, apart from the, the two dogs and the two cats. Uh, that was very honest of you, and, but you, you also follow that with you have empathy for those that do have other people to feed, other mouths to feed. So uh, thank you for that. The volunteering thing, I think that's a really positive thing. I think 
you know, whatever we can do, we should do. I saw David McWilliams this morning put it out there, the economist that he has volunteered to the HSE to be of assistance. I just read into it that maybe he did some first aid back in the day. I'm not quite sure. Um, but you're using the time positively. You're, you're downtime. You're getting your accounts done. You're getting your to-do list out of the way. And you're upskilling. Really interesting. Talking to Alan yesterday. I think you, you were in for that chat, talking to Alan yesterday, and he was saying that he sees this not as him closing down, but as him in his startup phase for when he's going to reopen, relaunch, whenever the veil is lifted. And I'm sensing the same for you. Are you positive about the future once this thing lifts? Very positive. And one of the things I'd love to say is we're, I feel very supported by our government, all the measures they've put in place and all the offers. And I really feel as a country, we're really showing the best we can. Everyone is doing the best. And I always believe in the Irish. We're great. We will, we will, we will rise again, as they say. And we're doing it, hopefully, with lessons learned. Maybe we all needed to slow down a bit. Maybe we all needed to have a little bit more time in our schedule. And maybe we go back to the old way of one day of rest a week where we're not scheduling things. We're not busy having to-do lists and that we just have that time for ourselves. Sounds lovely, sounds idyllic, but I agree with you. It's really interesting to hear you saying this, that we're, you know, we're very strong together based on your, your sporting family background and uh, all, those, all those many, many uh, Ireland games uh, and Ireland standing tall together and shoulder to shoulder and all that stuff. So I think we need to bring that into ourselves, into our lives today, and then share it out there with other people. And I think we need to be of support to people where we can uh, and then be willing to ask for help and support if we need it. That's an important part of this too. Let's not fly solo, you know, pretending we're all strong when in fact we're, we're crumbling underneath. If we need help, let's reach out. And then those of us that are feeling strong at any moment in time, let's reach out and be a support to, to others. And I think you're, you're a, a model for that, Orla, if I may. So positive about the future, which is wonderful. Um, I suspect Kincorric therapy will, be, will operate differently when we get there, when it operates, when it opens for business again. Well, one of the things I'm actually looking at, it's going to be a whole lot easier without soft furnishings and nice blankets and pillows for people. I might actually make that the new normal because it's a lot less work for the therapists because you, all you have to do is spray and wipe the table. There's no laundry. Wow, really interesting. <laughs> That's one positive I'm thinking no, of. No, it is. But if I may, I'll, I'll touch on that because Alan spoke with this yesterday. Alan took more money in his closed cafe in Bird Hill uh, last, the last week. Well, it's not quite closed, but because he switched his model from table service to takeaway. And he made, uh, did more sales with three staff than he ever did with seven staff. And it's a model, it's a takeaway model that he would never have tested because it would have felt wrong to test it, given the way the world was operating. And the same, I suspect you wouldn't have ever considered testing a wipe-down surface when there was... Oh, no, that's minding people and cocooning yeah. and... Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I love it. So, Orla, we're, we're going to do a Q&A from the audience. And, folks, you're all very welcome. Lovely to have you all on here. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, go on, please. Just one tip that... I was going to ask her a tip. <laughs> The really important tip is to make your exhalation longer than your inhalation. Just do that one more time, please. Make your exhalation longer than your inhalation. Will you give us a system? Will you show us how to do it? So if you breathe in for a count of six and out for a count of eight. Can we all do it together? Yeah, we'll all do it together. So we're going to start and I'll count us in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then slowly out for a count of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And do that twice more. And that's scientifically been proven to reset your nervous system. Because when fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Orla, fabulous. Thank you very much indeed. So, um, Orla, you put, your, you put your connection details, your social media uh, bits into the chat box. Folks, feel free to do the same. If anybody would like me, by the way, to send you links to the various, uh, to the, the recordings of these Coffee with Columns, 
Uh, slot your email address in there too, please, and I'll do that. And uh, we're going to do a Q and A now. And uh, if anybody has a question, would like to ask or a question, uh, would you just raise your hand on screen so I can see it, and then I'll unmute your microphone, and you can you can have a conversation with Orla directly. Who's brave? Who's the bravest to start that? Don't be shy. I'm looking at some of the heads here, and you're not shy people. Aoife Gaffney, lovely to see you. Just one second now. Aoife Gaffney, you're live. Thank you. Orla, can you explain, is it AMDR or EMDR? EMDR, it's, uh, it's a very simple branch of psychology. It's a modality that uses rapid eye movement. Hi, I can see you now, sorry. I needed to widen my screen, this new technology. So it's EMDR, you're just using rapid eye movement. Uh, to sort of hardwire into your subconscious mind. It's similar to the REM sleep, sleep state and it's used to release negative emotions that are caught and holding you back. It has a lot of science behind it. It was um, highly tested in the Vietnam vet hospital, hospitals for post-traumatic stress. And it's very simple, very safe for most people to use. It's not recommended for anyone with psych psychiatric mental illness, but for general well-being and anxiety, depression, and not under the care of psychiatrists. It's perfect and it's safe for everyone to use. It's lovely. It's a really nice therapy and really uh, effective. Okay, thanks very much. Does that cover it, Eva? It does, yeah. Thank you for that. Who else has a question? Thank you, Who's next? Tim Kelly, young Tim Kelly. Unmuted there, Tim. Hi, how are we doing? Can't see me. How are you? What's I, I'm good. Uh, this is Bailey. This is my uh, working companion. Yeah, hi, Bailey. Oh, she's got shy now. Um, quick one. Uh, I, what I've noticed from talking to a few people that I know for a while that are busy, busy business people all the time, um, they're so used to being so busy. They get up in the morning and their day flies. They have 12 hours done before they know it and they're back in their bed. And all of a sudden now they have time on their hands. And I was only talking to my dad this morning who spent 40 years running around like that. He doesn't know what to do with himself. I said it's like, it's like an early practice for retirement. You figure out what your hobbies are and what you can do and trying to keep it positive. But do you have any advice for people like that that just literally have never in their lives stood still for more than a day? Um, and you were saying earlier about getting used to this new paradigm of, having time in our hands and taking things a bit easier? That's a great question, Tim. It's, well, he can borrow your dog daily for a start. <laughs> daily for a walk, because that's a really good way for, to get people used to the quieter, slower pace of life. Get into nature. Time spent in green and blue spaces, like next to water or going through forests, will automatically help people to slow down and get away from that business. And it is important to still keep yourself busy, have your routine, get up in the morning, you know, even though you might not have the same level of work, get up and, you know, do things, you know, but do it slower, more mindfully, more present, even listening to the birds. How many people have taught to listen to the birds and they're singing in such bird song this week. It's amazing. The crows were out when I was on a run this morning and I never even heard before, like the Nilesh birds in Killaloo at night because there was always some residual noise over the lake carrying and there was beautiful night birds we heard this thing. So just actually stopping, even to smell flowers, notice what's blooming and just actually take the time to be with yourself. And then a lot of people don't like slowing down because they might never face things from the past. You know, they get uneasy, you know, any unresolved negative emotions. It's very hard to sit with yourself. So maybe it's a time now to avail of if you've health service, if you have health insurance, you get free counselling for up to I think eight free counselling sessions with all the health insurers. So that could be a good time for people to avail of that telephone service. It could be a good time to start journaling and sort of feeling or even prayer. You know, every, all this helps. Or even talking to a friend going, this, this keeps coming up for me because it is a time that people will have time to process. And we're all in this together. And it's no, there's never been a better time in our world to talk about mental health 
and things that, that are in the past that are holding us back because we can actually understand it better. People are more open to understanding that we all have challenges in our life. There is not one person in the world I know that has a perfect life that doesn't have something that we need to deal with on a physical, emotional or spiritual level. So just taking the time and there's so many resources available and there's free resources. Um, if you want to go to the level, if you don't have health insurance, that's where, you know, Smart and Theatre House and all those places offer up free services. And the therapists like myself sitting around would happily take a call from anyone who needs it. Really good question and I think a wonderful answer, uh, Orla. Very, uh, you went far deeper than I imagined you might, but uh, thank you for that. You know, um, really interesting point that people, some people might, might be afraid of the silence at the moment because they're going to be forced to consider stuff uh, that they were burying because of the noise and happily burying because, uh, you know, they, they had the excuse of the noise around them. So it's going to be an interesting time ahead. But that, was a, that was a lovely question and a, a lovely holistic it goes back to your yeah, the physiotherapist with the holistic twist, isn't that right, Orla? That's you. Yeah, that's me. Uh, I love it. And I bounce. And, and you bounce. You're on your bouncy ball. I love it. I'm watching ball. Yes, I do. Yeah. <clears throat> Tim, thank you for that. Other question, folks? You're not that shy, really and truly. Okay. Listen, um, I just want to thank everybody for coming on this morning and, uh, and joining us for this Coffee with Colin Live with my good friend Orla Foley uh, here in the beautiful part of the world that is Killaloo. And uh, the whole idea behind this series is um, to uh, invite people where we have a conversation, a real conversation with real people, and uh, Orla fits the bill perfectly. Real conversation with real people who are uh, coping with real challenges at this moment in time. And the whole idea is that we can share that conversation out. I see Eamon can bring you in on a second. Thanks for that. We share that conversation out um, so that people out there know that they're not alone. That's the most important thing. We've got to, uh, we've got to re remain um, together somehow in this. I went out for a walk this morning earlier, or, or you mentioned prayer, and I had this really surreal experience. I went for a walk out the back here, and I'm walking down towards the river, and I see this guard in full uniform with his high-vis uh, jacket on, and he walks up, and already you know this part, he walks up to the statue of Our Lady right by the, the, the canal there. And he just walked as far as it, stopped 10 or 15 seconds silent prayer and turned around and walked back again. And I just thought it was beautiful uh, because folks were in a strange world. We're in a very strange world. It's, uh, it's time to regroup. Eamon Smith, you have a question. Let me unmute you if I can. There we go. I do. Thanks, Colin. Uh, morning, everyone. Morning, Orla. Thank you so much for sharing um, your amazing story. Um, I, I, yeah, I have a question um, in terms of yourself, Orla. I'm very inspired from, from listening to you, and it, it, this all really resonates. I suppose for me, a big thing now is morning routine. Like you know, literally first thing in the morning, the minute my eyes open, and then the brain will start to come in. La 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 la. la. So could you maybe share what's your right at the start of the day, when you open your eyes and you're present, let's say, you know, in the 3D, you're here, how do you start your day? What would be your, the beginning of your day to kind of, do you know what I mean, to kind of kickstart, just to get you into the day? Would you have any kind of early start of the day routines that work for you? I sure do, Eamon. I am, um, and my routine is a lot longer now because I have more time to do it. Yeah. Before, it used to be about 15 minutes meditation when I wake up. Now it's about a half an hour and just mindfully breathing, noticing that there's a lot more silence in the world. Mm. So you know, something, you know, a lot more silence and actually just getting up and I go for a walk or a run and I do yoga most mornings and then I come back and then I get set up my work and get my day going. I eat really well. And I'm actually, that's one stress response, or maybe it's just, I, I might be a social eater that I eat more when I'm in company, but my appetite has dropped back. Or maybe it's a practical thing to save food, who knows? <laughs> Ignore that, that's only a joke. <laughs> we have plenty of food, no plan. <laughs> uh, so I am mindfully eating more food, and then about half 10, 11, I'll tune into the news of the world, just, I do that twice a day, 
I normally would do it once a day, but I like to keep abreast in the crisis in case mm. I need to do anything, change anything. So, but I am limiting it to twice a day. Just, and there's really good sources, you know, the RT are good. I love routers, they tend to be really fast. And um, having good conversations with friends, we have a great network set up in WhatsApp groups. You know, we all have to say good morning because, you know, I live on my own. And so all my friends that live on our own, we're texting each other in the morning, texting each other last thing at night and just checking in, seeing how we're all doing. And uh, it's nice to be in that community. And then when I'm inspired and I'm thinking about someone, I just pick up the phone and it tends to be that they need a call at that time. Wow. Connecting and being there. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you. I trust yeah, that thank you very answers. Much. Fantastic. Folks, um, I promise to keep this sort of short so we won't drive on for, for very much longer. I want to thank Orla Foley and uh, it's just been an absolute pleasure. It's a pleasure knowing you, but a pleasure having you online this morning and uh, join us up for Coffee with Colm. So we do the, the deaf community clap for Orla because you're all on mute. I'm clapping myself. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Orla, work away. Do it yourself. And uh, uh, there's, thank you, Maureen. Great to see you on. Um, so look, it's been a pleasure. Tomorrow morning, 11 bells, same place, same link. And we have the wonderful Aoife Gaffney, who is the bravest to step there. Aoife, hey, Aoife. Uh, Aoife's coming on tomorrow, and Aoife's got uh, a story to tell as well. And she's got a, a fascinating business. She's Ireland's only quali uh, what, accredited money coach. If I'm, I've got that right. I presume I have, Aoife. If I'm not, but, uh, Aoife is a money coach. Uh, she's going to help us. Uh, survive and thrive financially through uh, COVID-19. So looking forward to that immensely. Once again, Orla Foley, it's been an absolute pleasure. Folks, thank you very much for coming on this morning. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.